We're focusing on several calls for restructuring. Uh, yes, we're starting with that this morning. We've got uh, Bonlu Adegburu, a legal practitioner here with us today. Thank you for coming on this morning. Thank you. Good morning. Well, this morning we see in the dailies where uh, London elders disagree with the call for restructuring. Uh, former IGP Brian Kumashi says he's clearly not going to support the call for state police. And then he says this call for restructuring is a misplaced priority. What do you think of the call itself? Well, I think that the proper thing is to say that when you get agitations of this nature, restructuring, true federalism, resource control, self-determination, it's a confirmation of the fact that the system we run in Nigeria is lopsided. The system we run in Nigeria is anachronistic and cannot sustain the current federation that we claim to be operating. As a matter of fact, the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria has imposed upon us a unitary system of government. Not a federal system? No, there is no federal system. We are running clearly a unitary system of government where everything is centralized. Uh, if you get, go through the constitution and indeed the system of government, Judicial officers are appointed centrally, and they are paid centrally. Security is centralized. Um, uh, mines and minerals, they are centralized. Even education is centralized. So to that extent, you do not have any capacity as part of the federated units to exist on your own. As I s sit here this morning, 23 states cannot pay staff salaries. 23 states. They don't have the capacity to survive. And the reason is very simple. The Constitution has packaged everything that brings resources to us as a nation in the hands of the federal. Every item that brings money into the country, into our account, is in the hands of the federal. Oil and gas, mines and minerals, um, uh, customs, every, anything that has to do with money. Do you think that this government is looking at restructuring as a way to solve these agitations that we're currently facing? Well, the way I look at this government is this. There was a desire for change from what we were experiencing in the past. And then the government came because I had to go and check the manifesto and constitution of the All Progressive Congress. And the All Progressive Congress came as an amalgamation of several political interests and say, we have discovered that the major problem of Nigeria is lack of true federalism. And the number one cardinal agenda of the All Progressive Congress under this manifesto is to say that we will initiate action to amend our constitution, Nigerian constitution, with a view to devolving powers, duties and responsibilities to states and local government in order to entrench true federalism. That is the cardinal objective of the All Progressive Congress. Does that translate to restructuring? That is the meaning. True federalism means that you allow the federating units to be empowered so that we can devolve power to them. You don't, have to, you don't need to go to Abuja to pay salary. You don't need a bailout as a state to survive. Because I cannot see any reason, for instance, why federal government should be interested in education. Why people have to be centralized to write um, university exams under a federal system. Because, look, if you check what is going on in this country now, a particular percentage of our youth are abroad. I heard you, when you write here, that 2,000 Nigerians are in some jail in somewhere in Libya. There are several of them in so many other jails. But what I'm saying is that if you check America, South Africa, Ghana, Europe, you find a percentage of our youth from a particular sector of the country who are scattered all over these places. Because the system we have here does not satisfy their yearnings. I have been a victim. I wrote a central examination to get admission into Obafemi Law University and scored a high mark, 264. And the cutoff to enter that university was 268. And I was told that I couldn't get in because of four marks because I come from a state that is educationally advantaged. That was the first time I was hearing it, that because I come from Ondo State, I will not get admission into a university in Oshun State by virtue of my birth. And I had to wait a year because of four marks. And there are people who came from other less 
um, according to them, disadvantaged areas and scored marks that are less than 200. So I was tied down for one year. The frustration that I experienced would be for me to travel and look for alternative abroad. So what we are saying about restructuring is very simple. And it's not in the restructuring about changing power. That's why I, I, I'm a little bit uh, constrained to agree with IBB, to agree with all our leaders and politicians about what they mean by restructuring. It's not about changing power. The restructuring we talk about is empowering the constituents of the federating yeah. units. But, but that's what he said. He said that uh, to the extent that the states will have more to do, and more funds, more resources, there'll be state police. You will have this, the concept of having federal roads in states now seems more about that. He says, it's in line with that, that needs to change. No, the restructuring we are advocating for now, but otherwise, when you get this, you start a, another agitation again. It's to say, take a look at this constitution. Mm -hmm. And ensure that you do it in such a way that money, resources, is not in the hands of our leaders. Because that's what's causing the problem. When a single person has capacity to amass wealth of about 10 billion naira, because there are no compulsory regulations asking him to implement certain things. What do you suggest? Well, suggestion is very clear. Chapter 2 of our constitution says that the primary purpose of government is the welfare of the people. Government should be responsible for infrastructure. The commanding heights of our economy should be spread amongst all our people, not in the hands of a few. But as that chapter was to close, they then put a clause there to say these things are just matters of aims and objectives. They cannot be enforced in any court of law. Education, roads, power, the government has a duty to provide these things under this constitution, but that there's no power given to any court to enforce it. So the governors, what they do, the presidents, what they do, the ministers, what they do, is to abandon the people, is to abandon that responsibility of providing infrastructure, of providing health care, of providing a power, and then amass money in private hands, private accounts, so that people don't get benefit of governance. No, so the restructuring we are saying, therefore, is this. Make it compulsory for a particular percentage of our budget to be a mark for road, to be a mark for this. Make it compulsory that if they are not doing it, you take them to court, you enforce it. You know, one is compelled to ask this question. Since you've spoken about enforcement of, uh, of those sections that you're talking about, will there be an alternative to restructuring? Well, the way I looked at what we're agitating for now is to say, let there be dialogue. Let there be a discussion. Let there be an agreement. You remember the history of this constitution, for God's sake. We were asking that the elections of June 12th should be reinstated. And it took us a long route, right from 1993 up to 1997, when finally the military agreed to surrender power. General Abu Abubakar selected three people to write a constitution for the entire nation. 